Hey, what's up guys? Scotty Mega, episode 15 of Pile Driver. Doing it poolside here at Uncle Bob's. Got the kids in the back, wife kicking around with them, having a good time. So this one we're gonna do wrestling takes on the music business. Just like this video wouldn't be anything without the music, wrestling as we know it would be totally silent Still chilling poolside, having a good time. Couple flips, couple laps, having a having a wonderful family time here. I thought, just as many others, that uh, the beginning of music and professional wrestling started with the Freebirds coming out to Leonard Skinner, Freebird. In my research, I found out I was wrong. And I realized that in 1950, Gorgeous George used to come out to Pomp and Circumstance, which was then borrowed by the Macho Man much later down the road. So that's kind of cool, seeing how two of the classics use the same music. I thought that was real neat. Um, sorry, wife's walking around poolside looking fine as wine. Anyhow... We did do a lot of research in this one, and uh, I also found out that in the 70s, Sergeant Slaughter, when he wrestled in Madison Square Garden, he would use the Marine Corps hymn. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Slaughter, you know, using the Marine Corps hymn at MSG. How fitting, right? So uh, it wasn't until probably 75 into about 84 that the Freebirds utilized Freebird. And after that fact, uh, Michael Hayes went into the recording studio and he did what we all now know as Bad Street USA. So about the 84, 85 timeline is when the royalties and the copyright thing became an issue. And Vince doesn't want to spend that money. Every time that song gets played, the band's got to get money and then it gets thrown into the video games, which is more money. So why not have a composer? So that's why I credit Jim Johnson with so much stuff. Uh, Jim Johnston just, he killed the game. He reinvented so many things about wrestling and the culture and the way we know it. Rick Derringer, we owe all the credit to the world with Real American. And one, th one thing I really thought was pretty cool was uh, the fact that he wrote Demolition, and I didn't know that. But that was available on the wrestling album 2, entitled, you guessed it, Pile Driver. So I thought that was really neat. Uh, but that also gave you Robbie Dupree's hit, Girls in Cars, that was given to Strike Force, which I don't really understand why that was their theme, but whatever. One of my other favorites off of that album has to be Jive Soul Bro for our main man Slick, the Reverend and the Doctor of Style. So with all that news, with the fabulous Freebirds switching over to Bad Street USA, was about the same time that Vince McMahon and the WWE went into the studio themselves in 85. And they recorded their own wrestling album. That wrestling album had such hits as Land of a Thousand Dances. It had Real American written by Rick Derringer that was made for the U.S. Express, Wyndham and Rotundo, which, such a good song. Uh, each song was kind of like narrated with an intro or an outro by Jesse the Body and Vince McMahon. Um, and that, to me, you know, that was always pretty cool. I did enjoy that part. Uh, so, if you go back, though, because that was December of 85. If you go back to, dis it was uh, March of 85 with WrestleMania. Hulk Hogan came out to Eye of the Tiger. And JYD came out to Another One Bites the Dust by Queen. And Wendy Richter was brought to the ring by her then valet, one of the many celebrities that were at the original WrestleMania, none other than Miss Cindy Lauper, who kind of had a tie with uh, Captain Lou Albano portraying her father in that music video. So girls just want to have fun. That's pretty cool. Uh, neat marketing ploy. The only way you can find that recording is if you go back and you get the WWF home video and Coliseum videos. 
and it has the original music on there. Uh, so just check it out if you get a chance, if you can find that Coliseum video. I've got one in my collection. Unfortunately, it's on beta. So if anybody's got a beta player and wants to come over and watch it, you're more than welcome. Is I think it'd be kind of fun. I don't know. Let's jump right back into this. So Jim Johnston was employed by the WWF from 85 on to 2017. And he wrote so much entrance music for all the stars we know. Most of the legends, uh, Jimmy Hart had a big part in writing a lot of those. Uh, once again, as I stated earlier, Macho Man used Pop and Circumstance, uh, which I knew as a kid as the graduation song. So when I heard, you know, Macho Man come out and, and my first earliest memories of that were pomp and circumstance i was like oh okay now i know uh but as a kid you know i didn't really know what was going on and i didn't understand why i was coming out to the graduation music but jimmy hart he wrote such classics as american dream for dusty Rhodes, and he wrote the mounties song so just cool stuff but in a lot of that he always said in in one interview that when he wrote Sexy Boy, that was his greatest accomplishment. And I like the Vince McMahon version. I think it's pretty cool. You can look that up on YouTube. It was one on, on one of the WWF uh, albums years back. But if we have to credit Jim Johnson with anything, I'm going to say, even though he's not one of my favorites, Bret Hart's music is pretty badass. And you got to look at Vader. you got to look at Austin, Ultimate Warrior. He wrote so many amazing hits over the years and then CFO dollar sign came on board and they have pretty much all the new talent from 2017 on so they're responsible for a lot of the NXT themes and uh, glorious domination for Bobby Roode, Shinsuke Nakamura, uh, just so many cool um, amazing entrance music. Uh, I mean just think of some of those promos that were very cinematic what they would have done or what they would have been without music behind them. You just got to think about that, you know, it's, it'd be pretty boring. Back in the Carney days, the guys coming out to booze or cheers. And, you know, we always used to say, if you were new into a fed and you were working another new guy, like who's the heel, who's the face, you go out and you let the crowd decide. So in a way, you know, you're wrestling in front of all these Carney folk and the wrestling in front of all the townspeople who better than to judge but so WCW they had a lot of uh, entrance music as well I'm not sure who their composer was but I do know that a lot of their songs were kind of cover songs and in those cover songs uh, you had guys like DDP who came out to a cover song you had Chris Jericho whose second entrance was a cover song and I believe Raven was like an offspring cover song. But then you had companies like ECW, who really didn't give much of a fuck. And they were cable syndication on a public access network. Those guys, they used whatever they wanted. Uh, sometimes they'd try to shoot around it, but when you had a guy like the Sandman who came out to enter Sandman, and the whole time he's smoking cigarettes and drinking beer, which I am Sans right now, um, because I'm responsible when I'm with the children. But uh, you had him come out and the song played pretty much the entirety of the seven minutes it is. Or New Jack came out to Natural Born Killers. That song still hits a note with me every time. I always look around and make sure there's not a trash can full of weapons or plunder heading my way. ECW then got the syndication and they got the network. So they had to change up the music a little bit. So instead of using Pantera, instead of using uh, the Eagles, Desperado, for our man Funk, um, you know, instead of using Man in the Box for my boy Tommy Dreamer, they started using Harry and Harry Slash and the Slash Tones, and he covered all of those songs, which were available on the first ECW uh, entrance music. Uh, CD that they did. I thought that was pretty cool. I'm trying to recall off the top of my head what that was called, but I can't right now. I do own, I do own them, but I forgot to write everything down on all my notes with me. It's just me, my shorts, and my towel, and the fam. So many other topics we could cover. 
but I honestly think the biggest person who went into wrestling and then went into music has to be hands down Chris Jericho. Seven studio albums to his credit, countless tours. They've appeared on a few tribute albums, um, always making a ruckus, always making a splash. A splash, we're at the pool. But he's just such a good dude. Um, his band is amazing, and I truly enjoy seeing him. Uh, COVID stopped me from seeing him for the third time. They rescheduled for August, but I don't know what's going on with that. We haven't gotten any updates since. Hoping we hear something soon because I love seeing them and I can't wait to see them. They're just such a good time. And I always run into my friends there. So it's just such a fun venue to see and visit at the Chameleon Club in Lancaster. Um, I know their future was kind of uncertain there for a while, so we'll see what happens. But that whole thing formed when WCW started working with Stuck Mojo. And Stuck Mojo was also a huge part of what Fozzie became uh, via Rich Ward and Frank. So we got a lot of cool uh, music brought into WCW all by Stuck Mojo, and I can't complain about any of it. A lot better than what they did with Megadeth, and uh, just not a fan of them, because I think they worked with Goldberg as well, and I'm not a huge fan of Goldberg. So, man, look at Rin Ballard soaking up the sun in the, in the pool back there. Say hi, Ren. So that's pretty much going to sum it up here poolside. I think I'm going to jump in one more again. Get wet. Have fun with the kids. And uh, is if you watch this, I miss you. Next time, it'll be you here with us, too. So for all you funkers, I'm a funker. He's a funker. Pretty sure you're a funker. Thank you for watching, Pile Driver. We'll see you again soon. Just can't show my